still, at this point in your career, have the hunger and desire? Come on now. Hey, listen, listen. Um, this this off season, I I've, I've been pissed off all off season. I've been very very angry. I've been at peace, but I've been mad at the same time. If that makes sense. And so I got um, I had a lot of people down me this off season, and um, I, I still I'm still keeping it going. I'm thankful to be here, but that that burning desire you're talking about, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's on the hundred right now. They talked about it. They definitely talked about it. And I've, um, like I said, I've had a lot of success in my career. And coming in, be that guy to, when things go good, when things go bad, I'm that calming presence that's in the locker room, that's on the football field. And that's what I was telling them. You know, um, I've been in some situations to where I felt like my, my presence made an impact on us being successful. And so um, um, I'm thankful to be here. And there's so many other guys out here, too, with Max and, and Yannick, guys that's played in this league a while. We're going to all collaborate, make sure this defense is, at the, is one of the best. After you visited, did you do some homework on this team and, and mm -hmm. on that and what you've seen so far? What are your initial thoughts? Yeah, I uh, looked looked up the roster, looked at the D line, the linebackers, and um, watched watched a little film on them. And I say, oh, these, these guys these guys are pretty good. I watched that preseason game that they had against um, Seattle, and so um, this team is hungry. It's really good energy here. Everybody wants to be successful. Um, that's in this building, and so I love it. It's really good vibes, and um, we gotta make sure we start fast on Monday. Just start fast. Come out ready to work. Okay, it's Tashari from The Athletic. Um, you spoke about it a little bit, but this offseason was something that you kind of hadn't really had to deal with before in your career. Uh, how did you just approach that overall and kind of stay balanced and not get yeah. too emotional about it? Yeah, um, I did okay. I, I told myself in the beginning, um, just, just stay the course. Just trust the process. And I'm telling you, this is my first time ever being a free agent. And... When you watch the guys go to OTAs, watch the guys go to training camp, that's, that's not easy. That, that's pretty hard, especially when I've been doing it my whole time. And so um, I was in my word constantly. This is the closest I, I believe I've ever been to, to the good Lord. And his peace and comfort just, just guided me throughout this process. Just having people I could talk to that's been through it, other free agents. We are uh, just bouncing off each other and make sure that um, your mind stays stay sane pretty much. Did it, did it feel weird to be on a different practice field, a different building? This was kind of the first time for that? Nah, no, it felt good. It, it felt really good. Just put on a different jersey, it's a new chapter. It's a new chapter, and I feel like guys welcome me in with open arms. Coach Gruden introduced us in the, the team meeting, and so it, it felt really good to be out here. And just um, I feel like I'm connected with the guys already. So. And there's something noticeable is that you've uh, taken advantage of the new jersey number proposal and you went back to 34. What is it like being back to your old number? It feels good. I, at first I had 58, and then I, you know, I was like, can I please get 34? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, high school number, college number. My dad wore number 34, so it runs in the family. And so it's just a good change already. Uh, Nick is number 50, and so um, that was out of the question. So it only made sense to go back to my roots. When you watch the film of this team, as you just mentioned a moment ago, a lot of young players, but what stood out to you? Mm -hmm. I would say I would say how how fast they play, how fast they play, how detailed they are to the scheme. I know this scheme. I've been doing this since my rookie year, and how they take care of all the intricate details that that Gus wants to accomplish. And so guys are on the details. When you see that throughout the season, you won't see too many mistakes with this defense. So guys are on their job, on the responsibilities, just executing what what the play is called. Well, a lot of guys obviously came from Gus. Uh, say it again. A lot of guys have come from Gus. Uh, yeah. That make it. Yeah, I mean, obviously for good reason, they're really good players, but will that make the transition to making this defense even better than, or as quicker as it can be? Yeah, I believe so. There's a lot of similar lingo that, that he had that's been transferred over now. So I'm able to talk to the guys with the same verbiage, same, same signal, same communication, and so just pick it up really quick. Because if I was to go to like a 3-4 team, I would have been, that would have been like really big, big baby steps for me. But get plugged right in. I understand the gaps, the, the calls, so it feels good. What makes the scheme, the scheme go? What makes it so successful? It's just simple. It's simple. You got the call. You got the, the, the stuff up front. Just execute it. And so Gus not go, you know, he don't throw too much at us. We just want to play fast. That's what the, the good defenses do. You've seen Gus throughout his whole career. He's at the top uh, when it comes to, you know, total points and um, just turnovers. And so you get what you emphasize with um, Coach Bradley. You got to make sure we execute what he wants. How much have you thought about, like, you're coming in now, you're trying to learn everything. It's kind of... You know, maybe a whirlwind. I don't know if that's if it's fair to say that you're trying to move and everything. Yeah. Else. And you've got a great. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, it's not the easiest team to 
Yeah, it's, it's, it, it presents its challenges. Just, um, yeah, got, got a lot, but it, it's a part of the business. I um, already found a place to live, got, got a vehicle, so that, that's a good part. But just, just coming in, meeting the guys. Uh, for me, the biggest thing is meeting the guys and creating a relationship with them. That's what I really want to do. So when I step on the field on Monday, they know me, they trust me, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a, part, of, I'm a part of the crew. This is kind of a full circle journey going back to your first defensive coordinator when you first came to the NFL. How much did Gus Bradley really help you get acclimated to the NFL and how much did that really mean to you being back with him now? Yeah, it, you know, it all came full circle. Jess, he was my first ever D coordinator. And it's funny, I played Mike when I first got to Seattle. So me and him was close, making the calls with each other and um, had him for those two years. And over the years, whenever we see each other, it's always love. Always seeing him, shaking his hand. We were talking the offseason every, every blue moon. And so just to come back with Gus, somebody I trust, somebody I know, you know, he'll take good care of me. So I'm excited. Lots of guys who played for Gus genuinely love him off the field as a man. What is it about him that draws you guys to him? I would say that he cares. Gus really cares about you. And, you know, I, we were talking about dogs. He, he bought a dog some years ago. He asked me what should he name his dog. And, you know, he knows all my kids. And, you know, I asked him how they're doing in school. And so you can look in people's eyes and tell that they care. You know, you just got to look and you look in people's eyes. Gus got that look. And so um, he's somebody that I always love playing for. And uh, he works his tail off. He's always in this building, making sure that this defense is going to be on point. And um, a guy like him, you know, deserves to be in, in this building and, you know, head, head coach one day again. What was your suggestion for the dog name? <laughs> that was nine years ago, man. Don't ask me that. <laughs> Don't ask me that. Ask Gus what he named. I, I can't remember, though. That was a long time ago. Has there been any particular player so far that's really made an impression with you, even though it's just been a short amount of time that you've come in with? I would say Max, Yannick, and uh, Casey, um, T TJ, yeah, uh, all, all those guys. Everybody just come out there. You know, they they run on the field when defense is called. They talking to me about what to expect and and all the good stuff. So all the fellas, it, it feels good. Even in my linebacker room, just talking with Nick and um, Corey. You know, those guys. You know, was here last year to what to expect. And so all those guys been been really welcoming. How do you balance kind of the the emotions of all the time in Seattle? And we saw you, you know, the goodbye video and everything else with like. Oh, it's a new challenge. It's exciting and all that, but there's also this kind of, I don't know, sadness is the right word, but like the emotions of that. Yeah, I mean, you you, you be honest. It was, it was tough leaving. You know, I felt like that was literally my home. I literally went there every day. I was there in the VMAC when I was at my own house with my own family. And so, yeah, it was tough saying, you know, saying about everybody making those phone calls. And um, But it's a part of it. It's a part of it. And those relationships will, ever st will forever stay. In the offseason, I'll see, you know, my, my coaches, my friends. And so um, my, my tenure there was amazing. Had a great time. Talked to Pete before I left, and, you know, no matter what, you know, you didn't bring me back, but it's all love. We got a decade together, and that's very rare. And so I was appreciative of every moment I had there. Former teammate of yours that you have now here again is uh, Quentin Jefferson. Have you talked to Quentin a lot since you have been here, and he's had you done a lot? Yeah, 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 Q was calling me all, all, all offseason, man, telling me, uh, hey, man, you need to get out here, man. We'd love to have you. And so I was like, I want to make it happen. And so with Q, just uh, to see him, to see Q even grow over the years. And I, I was with Q when he was a rookie. To see where he is now as a pro and uh, making plays the way he is. You know, somebody that, that you know, he called me all offseason, tell me he'd love to have me. He's a great teammate, great friend of mine, and so I'm glad I could play with him again. I know you played, you know, a few roles throughout your career at different linebacker spots, and the Raiders are a little bit shorthanded with the injuries. What do you kind of envision your your role being in that linebacker coach early? Uh, I would say to play the auto position, and if he needs me at any other positions on nickel, to know it and play that at a high level, and so. I pride myself on knowing all three positions. I've done them throughout my whole career. Start at Sam, Mike, and Will. And so whatever the coach needs me to do on Sundays and Mondays, I'll be there for him. You're so familiar with this defense. How would you describe if somebody asked, what's the auto position in this defense? Just a, a layman, what, how would you tell them? The auto position is the guy that's on the ball, off the ball, buzzing to the flat, setting the edge, making plays in the open field, communicating, helping the mic out, setting the front. He's just a guy that's just a, that just does everything. Blitzes come off the edge, and so he's a guy that, that does a lot, a lot of dirty work, a lot of open field tackles, and so you got to be a baller out there. At this stage in your career, KJ, are you in the best shape of your career? Yep. All right, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you all.